everyone, welcome to another Team Clueless Tournament Report. So today I am going to a tournament here in Luton, my first tournament of 8th edition and the four, first tournament of 8th edition that the club has held. Um, what rules are we using? We're using kind of standard army construction, um, but we're going with the GW approved kind of like uh, three detachments max. Uh, they have a, you can use all Forge World rule, um, which generally fine but some of the forge world rules are a bit crazy we've seen a few of the lists and some people are taking a lot of malefic lords shall we say but then again i'm taking a four model army so why can i moan at them uh what have i got in my army today so i am bringing uh four models as i just said um i'm bringing a super heavy detachment of these three bad boys uh we're bringing a corn lord of skulls He's armed with the Gore Storm Cannon, uh, which is a 2d6 um, shot flame weapon that's strength the same as him, so strength 10, AP minus 2, damage 2. Um, and then we have, what else on him? We've got the Skull Hurler, which fires 2d6 kind of d3 damage las cannon shot, so that's pretty good. And he's got his Great Cleaver, which is monstrous in close combat. Uh, he's quite an interesting Lord of War because um, he costs similar points to the Knight, but I think he's quite a lot better than the Knight. doesn't have quite the firepower, uh, but in close combat, when he gets damaged, he doesn't get worse to hit and such, um, and he gets more attacks when he gets damaged. So by the time he's nearly dead he can attack something like 24 times with his um, Great Cleaver in sweep mode. Uh, so really powerful, uh, really good model there. Um, he's not quite as fast, he only moves 10, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, then we have Angraf, and he's the real reason I was playing the army. Uh, the main army I usually take is Imperium, and I wanted to take an Imperial super list led by Gulliman with some Scions and all kinds of different stuff in it, uh, but I just couldn't get it all painted in time. Um, I'm taking my time over painting Gulliman, and I didn't want to rush him to get him ready for the tournament, so I decided to bring the Demon Chaos list instead. So Angraf required a little bit of painting to finish off, but that was a good excuse for me to finally finish this model. Uh, so he's really cool. Uh, he costs 700 points. I'm not sure he's worth that many points, uh, just due to the damage output, and the survivability aren't really up there for that. But he's really good fun. He's pretty fast. He moves 16. I mean, he'll kill more or less anything he touches in close combat. Uh, he's only got a 4-up save, only 24 wounds. I say only, but for 700 points, that's not that's not that much. Um, so I suspect he won't live that long. He is my warlord, though, and I'm going to give him the warlord trait of ignore a wound on a 6+, plus, just to try and eke out his survivability. And he's the only character of the free Lord of Wars, so... Uh, lastly, we are bringing a Renegade Knight. Um, he's got the Avenger Gatling Cannon, uh, which comes with Heavy Flamer. He's got the Storm Spear Rockets on top, which are the ones that are three-shot crack missiles. Uh, he's got a Heavy Stubber, and he's got a Reaper Chainsword. And then lastly, we have Bellacor. Uh, Bellacor is in the army for a few reasons. One, because once I started down this road I want, of using three giant models, I kind of wanted to go as minimum model as possible. So I could have taken a normal demon prince and some cultists and it would have given me an extra command point. Uh, but Bellacor is better than a normal demon prince. He gets cast two powers a turn. Um, he's much better in close combat. He's got six attacks, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. His sword is strength 7, AP minus 5, flat damage of 3. Um, he's faster than a normal Demon Prince. Uh, he's only got a 4-up save and a 5-up in Vun, but he gets to re-roll any failed saves, so he's pretty sweet. Overall, he is very good. Um, he's got a couple of other powers, like his re-roll 1 ability doesn't just affect him, it affects any demon, so it will also affect Angrath who's not got a bad shooting attack. He fires 2d6 plasma shots, basically. Um, and it will also affect the Lord of Skulls. So the reroll one's really handy if I can keep him close to those. Uh, but the main reason of taking him is that he can cast the psychic powers from the Chaos Space Marine book. Um, so instead of casting psychic powers from the demon book being a demon, he casts them from the Chaos Space Marine book, I think. It's because he's not dedicated to a god, I suspect. Uh, but that gives him access to um, Warp Time, which, when you cast it, lets a Chaos Space Marine model move again. This guy is a, a Renegade Astartes, so I can cast it on him and he can move again. So that gives him a 20-inch move, which more or less guarantees a first-turn charge with this thing, which will kill more or less anything in close combat. Uh, so 
that's kind of the combo going on there. Uh, the other reasons for taking him is, so I'm more or less always going to have warp time, but then I've got a choice of other powers I can take. I could take Prescience, uh, which gives plus one to hit, but it can only be cast on Renegade Astartes models. This guy isn't a Renegade Astartes, so he can't cast it on himself, he can only cast it on the Lord of Skulls. Uh, so, might take um, Prescience, but probably not that often. Uh, one of the other options that I've got is Death Hex, really useful power. Uh, choose an enemy model within tw or an enemy unit within 12 inches, uh, cast it. It's got a warp charge 8, so it's quite difficult to cast, but that model can't take in Vun saves. So, combining that with attacking it with any of these probably means that unit will die. Uh, so, that's a good assassination piece there and the other powers I might go for are again if I'm trying to um, combat mini little characters kind of like commissars that kind of thing I could take either Gift of Chaos or Infernal Gaze uh, both are mortal wound causing powers that can target stuff instead of hitting the nearest model like Smite does uh, so I might take either of those I'll change it up before each battle I suspect upon seeing my enemy's army Command point wise, I've got five, so I've got the three of having a battle forged army, then I get three for a super heavy detachment, and then I get minus one for taking Bellacor as an auxiliary detachment. I don't have any fancy faction bonuses because these are all from different factions, they're all from Chaos, but they're all kind of like muddled together. Uh, so that is my army. Other stuff we know we're going to see at the event, as I said earlier, there's loads of. Um, Malefic Lords kicking around. As far as we could tell, we couldn't see any Gulliman lists, so if I'd have taken mine, I'd have been the only one. Um, the list I'm most scared of is a list that consists of uh, Magnus the Red with four Malefic Lords in a command attachment. Uh, then they've got uh, Mortarion with four Malefic Lords in a um, command attachment. And then they've taken the giant Tazich. Um, Lord of Change from Forge World, I think he's called or something like that, uh, who is the most bonkers model in the game. Um, he costs the same points as this guy, is probably better in a straight up fight, has monstrous ranged attacks, has loads of psychic powers, um, and also has a three up invulnerable save on a model with 28 wounds and toughness eight. Um, just bonkers. I'm not sure how you're supposed to kill it, and I suspect that may be one of the leading lists of the day. But there's loads of other stuff. Loads of, I mean, the Luton tournament. Um, if you go down the club in Luton, you'll get a nice fluffy game with various different players and such. But there is an element of really solid tournament players, and we get quite a few ETC players turn up to the event as well. So it's really high end tournament lists. Um, so. I'm taking this, I have no clue how it'll do, but we shall find out later on. Okay, so here we are in the venue of the tournament. You can see we have 42 players today, lots of tables around and about. I finished my first game, which was against this gentleman over here. Uh, he was playing a Tau list, loads of Tau commanders with uh, loads of drones. Really interesting because I'd never played against this type of list before. Um, didn't do well, but we knew kind of that beforehand. I just can't kill enough drones, but it was a really interesting tactical game, and I learned quite a lot about how to deploy against them, um, because he was really clever. He deployed in ways, so you'd have all the commanders at the back, and then there were just lines of drones in front. So because of the character rule and the special Tau rule about uh, transferring wounds onto drones, choosing your targets and stuff is a really intricate thing and I, I think I think I'd do better if I played against it again because I learned so much about how to play against it. But it is a pretty good army. Um, the Tau commanders are bonkers. They have four guns each, so they're really cool. They've each got kind of like double blasters tacked onto the side of them. So that was my first game. Unfortunately I got wiped out turn three. Um, on turn one the poor Lord of Skulls bit it and so he has not got to shed any blood in the Blood God's name as yet and he died and did Bellacor six wounds uh, in the explosion which wasn't good but Angrath was awesome. He charged up, killed a load of stuff, then blew up and killed a load more stuff. Uh, the knight not so good. If I could remake the army I would try and swap that out for something else because it don't think it's really worth the point certainly compared to the other two. Okay, let's do a quick wander around the room. Okay, let's have a quick wander around and see what there is. People are just finishing their games. So over here we have Demon on Demon. There's a lot of brimstones down here. Nice to see you using all the proper models though. That must have taken quite some time and money to collect. <laughs> yep. How did you get on? Uh, one. Nice. Three, six, eight. What were you playing against? Uh, 
Uh, no, it's nice demons. Ah, interesting. A nice uh, thematic matchup. What have we got over here? So over here we have a couple of Magnuses which faced off. I've spoken to the guys who played these. So another load of brimstones. You can expect a lot of these. A load of demon princes. We've got the changeling, we've got Magnus, and we've also got three Helldrakes. Uh, but he got his face utterly pushed in by this list, which is possibly the nastiest here. So we have uh, Magnus there. We have Mortarion there. And then that's a Fate Weaver model, but he's using it as Atakekakus, the big Forge World thing, which he's not the best the proxies for in my mind because Atticatus should be well up here he's a much much bigger model uh, and then rounding off his list he has I think 13 or 14 malefic lords utterly hideous list he utterly trounced this guy who has a pretty solid tournament list there so interesting you'll see this is a bit of a theme there are some really nasty lists here come around here now this gentleman has a really striking looking Eldar army really nice the orange is excellent you a Luton Town fan? <laughs> uh, but really beautifully painted models here. Loving the freehand work on those. How did you get on? Yeah, Oh, excellent! Nicely done. Nice to see your army is a nice, diverse-looking army as well. It's not just yeah, yeah. multiples of the same things. No, very nice. Um, then what have we got around here? We have Orcs versus Dark Angels. Uh, this army is really cool. He's got a real story behind all his models. All of his models are named. All his dreadnoughts are named. He's got a really nicely painted cipher model that's hiding in here somewhere that he uses as his Warlord model. He's down there. Uh, but he was facing off against a million Orcs. He killed an awful lot of Orcs, as you can see by the dead pile that's being tidied up. Uh, but unfortunately, the Orcs got the objectives, a very un -orky thing to do. But this guy won. How many Storm Boys are you fielding? 141 Storm Boys. That is a lot of Storm Boys. I, I luckily won't have to fight that next round. <laughs> Uh, over here we've got a load of chaos. There seems to be so much chaos here. Um, we've got a load of blood... Um, uh, what are they called? Berserkers, loads of cultists. Over here I think these have been played as renegade guards quite possibly, although the Toroxes would say no, so just like normal guard I would guess. Uh, here we've got a sister's army. Some of the stuff's really nicely painted. I was chatting to this guy earlier on. He's been playing sisters for quite some time, as you can tell by his penitent engine. He's got a nice looking Celestine there. He's converted his own repressors, um, and he's just got a load of sisters he's in the middle of painting. He's played them for some time, but he hasn't really painted them. Uh, but now that they're good, he is breaking out the paints and getting them on the table. Uh, they won their game quite handily. They were playing against a gene stealer or a tyrannid army with loads of gene stealers. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, here it looks like we have some kind of guard, maybe renegade guard versus demons. We have some interesting looking blood letters down here. Uh, rough riders over there. Uh, look like nice diverse lists. Uh, coming over to this table, this was Chaos Space Marines versus Space Marines. Uh, there was, I think there's Grey Knights and normal Space Marines in the list. Um, and a load of Chaos Space Marine stuff. Look at all of those there. All nicely cornately. Ah, oh, these are all kind of like, look like converted Age of Sigma corn dudes. Looking really nice. Uh, round here we have some more Tau. Looks like they've got the stealth suits on the table. Um, and we're fighting against Grey Knights again, or Green Knights in this case. Yeah, interesting, we've got Vespid on the table there. Uh, then moving round over here, this guy has some brilliant conversions which I'm just going to show you. So we have this Lord of Change, sorry just taking a video. Uh, this Lord of Change here which is based, is it Nagash's base that he's built up with? Yeah, so look what that looks like, that is a fantastic one, beautifully painted as well. And then this guy, you have Magnus up here, but then on the bottom, inside, you have the Forge World Magnus, which just looks fantastic. I love that effect. Looks like he's swirling a big image of himself above him. Just looks brilliant. And is that from the uh, uh, Celestine Prime. Prime? Yeah, yeah. Really nice. You're getting my vote for Best Painted, because they are fantastic. And the rest of the army isn't looking too shabby well, either. He's all right. Yeah. These guys aren't. <laughs> Oh, in, in I don't know, there's like five different colours in those flames, that's have, pretty good. Have, to paint them. <laughs> oh, have you looked around at some people's armies? <laughs> no, they are excellent. Did you win your game? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, unfortunately, it means I won't fight them because I really fancy fighting those because the looks are good. 
What have we got? <laughs> no, well, I'm using four models, so I can't really complain. <laughs> I've got the giant bloodthirster. <laughs> what were you playing against? These are traitor guard or just guard? Nice. Yeah, they've got really nice basing on those. Excellent. What have we got over here? We have another army that may support Luton, possibly. We're here in Luton, so you never know. Uh, look like traitor Imperial Guardsmen, so we've got a massive tank there. It looks like a fell blade, maybe. And a load of nice, yeah, really nice brimstones. Look like it might even be handmade brimstones. Ah, okay. And I really like these things as well. We're using those as exalted flamers. Ah, nice. Very pretty. Then over here we have some Necrons, uh, nicely painted, and looks like these are... What, what are these you're fighting against? Ah, Guardsmen. Elysian Drop Troops. Ah, they look really spindly. They're much, much smaller scale than normal Guardsmen. They look much thinner. Uh, but they've got all these nice little tanks. Look like Halo models. <laughs> How did you get on? We just had it, we just literally just finished, it was a draw. A draw? God. Draw I was going to say, most people are just totalling each other. <laughs> okay, then what else have we got going on? We've got another Magnus over here, but this is in a quite thematic Thousand Suns army, so everything Thousand Suns there. Another really nicely painted force. Uh, loads of good stuff in there. Uh, we've got the Brass Scorpion list. Uh, I believe it's a Brass Scorpion, some Predators, some Rhinos with Berserkers in, led by Khan. Uh, over here we have um, some Space Wolves, uh, again really nicely painted army, lots of good stuff in there. It's got this special conversion kit on the night for the face and such, looks good. Uh, we've got a Dreadnought Drop Pod, god that's taken up a hell of a bit of retail there. Real estate I meant to say, not retail. Uh, so that's that there. And what else haven't we gone through? We've got Big Guard Tank. And then we have a load of Grey Knights, really nicely painted again. Probably a commander in his suit and a Storm Raven. And then I think this may be the last one we're coming across. We've got another Magnus um, with Demon Princes. Yeah, loads of Demon Princes and Cultists. And that, I believe, is all of the armies. So that's gone round today. We'll see how we're getting on. It's a really cutthroat tournament. There are some super solid lists here. I I hope to win at least a game, but it's so matchup dependent for me and mission dependent. You'll notice one thing, unfortunately, um, there's not really enough scenery on the tables to my mind. I mean, my table that we um, saw over there had no line of sight blockers at all. I really think that we need so much terrain now to make the mission even relevant. Otherwise, stuff is so killy, you can just wipe out the opponent, no trouble whatsoever. Uh, but when you've got 42 tables, I mean, the club's got a fair amount of scenery. Um, and, I mean, take this out, there's plenty of scenery on here. Because you like to keep it thematic, some tables do suffer a little bit for that. Um, but then it's just trying to find the money to invest in this much scenery. Uh, I'll come back after my second game. Okay, so it's end of round two for me. My game did not take very long at all. Uh, maybe 45 minutes at most. I was playing against gentleman who was playing a Space Wolf Dreadnought army. So he had Bjorn, uh, three Iron Priests, and seven other Dreadnoughts. Uh, a couple in pods. He had a couple with the shields that came down in the pods. And then a load of Venerables at the back. Um, he killed my Lord of Skulls first. So that seems to be the way it goes. Um, and then managed to kill Bellacor, uh, but the Bloodthirster went on a rampage, um, wiped out three or four Dreadnoughts, the Lord of Skulls had taken two or three beforehand, uh, the Knight shot a couple to death, and then finally managed to kill one of the shield guys in close combat, and ended up tabling my opponent. Uh, we were playing a Maelstrom mission, but we weren't really paying a whole lot of attention to it, uh, because it was just a big slap fest. It was a fun enough game. Um, but not particularly tactical on either of our behalves. There's still a load of games going on at the minute. Uh, I was just having a nice chat with the guy who's brought um, Magnus, Mortarion, and uh, the giant as each bird. Uh, he wiped out his opponent again. I will be shocked if anyone beats his army. I think it is pretty powerful. Um, other things, my last round tower opponent, he's kind of like having a bit of a difficult match against a uh, space marine player. I should go over and show you what's happening. Doo -doo -doo. 
Uh, as you can see, he's fighting against the guy with the big flyer and giant tank. He's trying to get through the screening units. Uh, Sisters of the Battle player is nearly dead. He's fighting against a Thousand Suns. This has actually got Thousand Suns in it, not just Magnus. Quite interesting. Uh, Space Wolves versus some Eldar here. I think the Eldar have the upper hand. It looks like just the knight is left. And the guy with the two beautiful painted models there is fighting against the giant horde of orcs. I'm not sure who has got the upper hand here. Who's got the upper hand over here? No idea. This is turn two. Turn two, my god. That many boys are dead already. Oh my lord, look at that for a dead pile, that's incredible. But, I'm being but there's still back. a lot left, yeah. Being pushed back a lot. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, down here. And there we go, I'll come back so to you at the end of round three. Now after the round three of the tournament, uh, just to give my final thoughts on my last game and such. In my last game I played against a really nice guy, I think his name was Dean, maybe I've remembered his name correctly, you never know. Uh, he was playing Space Marine Army, he had a few units of scouts to kind of screen outwards. And then he had a couple of units of Devastators, uh, he had a Knight, a uh, Razorback with Assault Cannon, and three different Assassins. Um, it was a really interesting game, we were playing Hammer and Anvil, so long table edge deployments. Um, so it favoured him early on because my big stuff had to get to him to really kill him. And he had these massive ruins on his um, back edge that he set up right on top of. So I couldn't get to him with anything other than the Giant Bloodthirster or Bellacor. Um, so I had to move forward and then he infiltrated his assassins in behind me to take the objectives behind. We were playing Maelstrom mission where you can score each other's objectives. Um, so early game he was certainly getting ahead on objectives but I was keeping up with him. But by the time I got to his forces, Angrath leapt over, killed the knight, killed the Razorback. Um, then Angrath managed to, because he could fly, he was on a, only a few wounds but leapt on top of the building that had his warlord. Um, everything else on top and just laid waste to it all. Uh, they managed to take down the wall, uh, my Angrath, um, but by that point Bellacor had dealt with some stuff on the other building and then died. Uh, my knight was utterly useless all game, it got crippled in the first turn down to low wounds and he ignored it and rightly so because it failed to hurt anything really. Uh, but the Lord of Skulls was awesome, it just kept on killing stuff at range, didn't get into combat at all but just proved it's powerful at range. Um, and by the end of turn seven, I think he would have won it turn five. We'd have drawn or maybe I'd have won by a point turn six. And by turn seven, I'd won by three points and he just had a Vindicare left. Uh, so victory in that one, which was good. So I ended up winning two, losing one. I came 11th out of 42, which pretty good actually with the list I took. Um, who won it? Uh, the guy who won it was playing a Chaos list. He was the guy who had the orange painted Fire Raptor and a big Sp Chaos Space Marine tank. And then he had a load of demons, brimstones, demon princes, and uh, malefic lords. Uh, he won quite interestingly. He won the tournament over the other guy who got three major victories, was the guy who was playing Mortarion, Magnus, and the big uh, does each bird. Um, the other guy had a better tournament record, but because this tournament takes into account painting points, um, and the guy with the big bird hadn't got his army fully painted, um, and also it took into account uh, sportsmanship in the form of um, the most best game votes. So the guy who had the second best tournament record actually overtook him to win the tournament. Uh, so I thought that was quite good because, speaking of various other people at the tournament, um, the painting standard and the modelling standard was was not brilliant, shall we say. I mean, I took you around the tournament venue earlier on and you could see there were there were lots of proxies, lots of people were using Forge World rules for models, but they'd got not the correct models. I mean, some weren't too bad. There was a Fate Weaver being used as a big bird. That's not brilliant. But there was somebody using kind of like epic land raiders instead of using the special Forge World explodey tanks. Okay, Forge World's expensive, but some of those are really poor proxies. Really poor. Um, and possibly they need to look at bringing in a guidelines of what you can proxy as what. Um, because so many people there have spent great care and attention bringing their models along and it comes down to spending money some people have bought big expensive models i mean i took a big expensive forge world model today um but it's, it's not so much that it's the fact that you're using something that's really doesn't represent the model at all 
it's got to be the right size. It's got to at least look semi-reasonable. Um, but the fact you don't get the points if you're not painting, I think possibly you should get dot points if you're not using the correct models. It's a simple way around it. It punishes people for doing it without making it so they can't use things they really want to use. So maybe look at that. And the only other contention point of the day is terrain. Uh, first one in 8th edition, we really need more line of sight blocking terrain on the table. There was very little, I think. I had one of my free tables had any, and even then it wasn't brilliant. Even, even if they have line of sight blocking, it wasn't in the centre of the table. So I think every table needs a big bit in the centre of the table so you can play the game around it more, make it a bit more tactical. Uh, because when there's no line of sight blocking, it is literally just a shooting gallery. There's no point in the table you can't see. But other than that, thank you, Jason, for running an excellent tournament. It was all run really well, ran to time. We got out nice and early. Uh, there were no rules issues. That's one of the joys of playing in 8th edition. There are no issues with any of the rules whatsoever. Everybody just goes along quite happily. Uh, so thanks again. Thanks to all my opponents. Three good games. And see you next time. Bye.